live from the McNeil International Film Studios in beautiful Baja, Tustin, Professor Mark McNeil. We're going to talk about <laughs> aggregate supply. We'll get over this. We will get over this. Aggregate supply. The previous uh, video was aggregate demand. This is aggregate supply, and then the next video will be equilibrium, where we put aggregate supply and aggregate demand together. So here's aggregate supply. Aggregate supply is a relationship between the aggregate quantity of real good supply. So this is all producers supplying in all markets in the economy. Uh, so that's part of it, and then it's a relationship with the price level as well. So that's the relationship. And, but in, with, ag with aggregate supply, first of all, we're talking about all goods. So we have the same issue. The price of all goods and then the real quantity of goods supplied measured in constant dollars. If you saw the previous video on aggregate demand, I explained that more completely. But, in, in the, but with aggregate supply, the issue, he lives. How nice, ceviche. <laughs> The, uh, the issue is the long run versus the short run. And in the long run, the definition is a period of time in which all wages and prices are flexible. So all wages and prices are flexible. It takes time for prices to adjust. And the, the presumption is that not all prices change at exactly the same rate. But in the long run, all of those adjustments have uh, worked their way out. So in the long run, there is no stickiness. Stickiness is the word that we use to reference the issue of some prices being slow to adjust to a change in the economic conditions, the markets, and so forth. And it's generally believed or talked about that wages and and certain prices adjust slowly. That is, that there's resistance to adjustments when market conditions change. So in the long run, we draw the long run aggregate supply curve as a vertical um, relationship. Actually, there's no relationship between price level changes and the quantity of goods produced. And uh, again, because in the long run, any price at any price level, there's time for all wages and prices to adjust. In the long run, production will be at the potential level of output. And if we look at the potential level, you know, most people are familiar with the production possibilities frontier. And with the production possibilities frontier, any point, any of these combinations on the frontier is the potential level of output. We'll get to more of this later, but just in terms of understanding what it means. So here, Y sub P is um, at 18, 18 trillion. And regardless of what the price level is, in the long run, the economy will adjust and will produce 18 trillion dollars worth. Um, and in the long run, all the adjustments necessary in the labor markets will take place as well. It's time enough for stickiness to not be a problem. Uh, if wages are, are, are sticky, it just means it takes a longer time for the wages to adjust to changes in market conditions, and the long run is a period of time sufficient to allow those changes. Um, so in the long run, this will be the quantity of workers working. The quantity of workers looking for work, that's the quantity supplied, will equal the quantity demanded. That's the number of uh, employers wanting to hire uh, workers and that this level Q1 is the natural level of employment that would be the employment the labor force minus the natural rate of unemployment the natural rate of unemployment you will recall uh, is comprised of frictional and structural unemployment that will always be in a normal healthy economy so it's so the natural level of employment is the labor force minus those two types of unemployment, frictional and structural. I've got lots more to say about potential uh, real GDP and about the changes. 
Um, but it's easier to explain that after having told you about the short-run aggregate supply. The short-run aggregate supply is a period of time in which uh, some wages and prices don't adjust at the same rate as other prices. And if that's the case, it opens a window of profitability for producers to produce more when the price level goes up and they'll take advantage of it. The, the basic deal is this. If we assume that wages tend to be sticky, that is, there's resistance to wages going down especially, or even going up for that matter, when the prices of the goods that the producers are producing and selling in the market, when those prices go up, if the input prices, especially wages, do not go up equally at the same time, then the price the sellers are receiving for the good has gone up, but their costs are lagging behind. And that opens up that window of profitability and producers want to increase the quantity they produce in order to take advantage of that. So that's the short run. When it opens that window of profitability between prices increasing and then some input prices uh, lagging behind. But eventually, will the input prices rise? They will. At some point, uh, wages will catch up to the price level increases. And then all of a sudden, when the, when the input prices go up to match the, uh, the uh, output uh, or the product prices, then all of a sudden, there's no more opportunity for producers to increase their output and uh, earn those profits. That is, the window has closed, that window of profitability. So in the short run, you have that window, but then the long run is a period of time where it's possible for all prices to adjust and there's no more uh, benefit to a producer responding to a price level increase to make additional profits. So in the short run, if in fact the price level goes up, but the input prices, especially labor, lag behind, then when the price level goes up, that creates that window of profitable opportunities and the quantity produced by producers will increase. And that means all of a sudden the short run aggregate supply curve has this kind of a slope to it, a positive slope. Um, anyway, that's the short run and the long run. Short run aggregate supply curve is, is this one with an upward slope. The long run is a vertical at whatever is the... Um, the potential level of output. So what is the difference between a change in aggregate quantity supply and a change in aggregate supply? Change in aggregate quantity supply is a movement from point A to point B along the curve and it is caused by a change in the price level. Uh, this is a change in aggregate, the movement is a change in aggregate quantity supply. What then is a change in aggregate supply? An aggregate supply change is a shift and it is caused by anything that affects producers' decisions about how much to produce and sell, anything besides a change in the price level, like resource input costs, like the technology of production, like the availability of, re of uh, uh, resources, like uh, taxes and government policies, like changes in the uh, rules of the game where the contracts are enforceable and, and so forth. So if any of these other things change, like um, what happens uh, if, uh, if uh, oil prices decrease? Oil prices have been decreasing lately. I think currently they're $20 a barrel or $23. That's a in input in the production of most everything. So when input costs go down, that shifts the short-run aggregate supply curve to the right because the quantity supplied can now be, can, that same quantity, whatever this quantity is, can now be offered at a lower price across the economy when input prices fall. So uh, that's the difference between short-run aggregate supply and long-run aggregate supply, the difference between a change in aggregate quantity supplied and a change in aggregate supply. Uh, 
stickiness is in this little discussion. That's always a good one. And I think that's about it. Thank you very much.